Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And for this tutorial, uh, we've got the fantastic Eyal Amir from x for Records, which is Steve Duda's plug-in company. And how's it going, Eyal? Going great. How are you, Josh? I'm good. Can't complain. Uh, this is the third time we've uh, we've actually taped this tutorial <laughs> because <laughs> uh, because I messed up the way I recorded this in the last time. So um, so yeah. So this is our third time through. <laughs> Funny enough. But uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, Eyal is going to create a very basic uh, MIDI plugin. So uh, so he's going to run you through the basics of MIDI buffer and uh, and how to create a very basic basic plugin so I'll let you take it away yeah right so uh right before we I move to my screen uh let's talk about you know what's the, the problem here of sorts mm -hmm. uh first of all there's the general issue of how to deal with MIDI events that come from that come from the host uh the other thing I want to talk about is kind of how we can create a plugin that does some sort of MIDI manipulation Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something that's not so uh, obvious to do uh, as developers. First, because it's not uh, something that works the same in all the hosts. So, mm -hmm. for example, Logic, Ableton, uh, Reaper would actually do it quite different, uh, even from the user's perspective, not just from the developer's perspective. Okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, try to... Uh, create a plugin that process or that that does something with MIDI that accepts MIDI yeah so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just going to open the producer and I'm just going to start the new audio plugin uh, template mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna change much about it but um, I'm going to add C lion which is my editor or my favorite editor to use. Uh, you can also use Xcode or Visual Studio. Doesn't matter all that much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's call this thing MIDI effect and create it. Uh, a couple of changes I am going to do. Uh, in the modules list here, I'm just going to remove a couple of modules that we're not using just to uh, speed up the compilation process so that this tutorial is shorter. Uh, you don't really have to do it it doesn't make uh, any difference on the actual program except for uh, quicker compilation time. Great. Uh, so it's all. Everything seems good. And let's uh, build the plugin. And let me open C line here, and actually open the generated project. So that would be under here. This is the folder I selected it to build into and the producer generated a couple of builds uh, so I just uh, I'm just going to use CLion and open the project file yeah. so so normally if you're using Visual Studio or Xcode you could just hit the button that says save and open in IDE uh, yeah. and that will yeah. do it fine for you yep uh, CLion uh, is, uh, uh, is not as smooth you have to click a couple of extra buttons <laughs> uh, but it's a uh, but it's a it's a really nice code editor, so uh, yeah. I'm going to keep uh, working with that one. So, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just see that what I'm doing will build. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to pick the VST three uh, target, and when I'm attaching the the executable, the host to run this, uh, I'm going to pick. Reaper, which is one of my favorite hosts uh, to debug and uh, and work with. And and if you know if you're not sure what Eyal's doing here, you might want to check my tutorial on how to load the plugin host. So this is a way that when you launch your plugin and you want to test it out and debug it, you can uh, actually have have the uh, when it builds, it la automatically launches Reaper or Ableton or whatever your DAW of choice is. Uh, so there's a tutorial on that. I believe it's number like 17 or something like that. So. Uh, it's one of the 60 tutorials that or so that we've done. So, uh, yeah, so check it out there. Yep. Uh, 
my dog's joining us for the tutorial <laughs> this time around. <laughs> yeah. Great. So, so yeah, so, so all I do is just attach things to, uh, to, the, to the Reaper project. And Reaper is, by the way, really nice because uh, Re with Reaper, you can, add, you can use all uh, plugin formats. So it's uh, VST, VST3, and AU. And uh, Reaper is really nice to kind of install on any computer. It's like 15 megabytes. You can install it on Mac and Windows. Uh, you can even uh, you know, use the trial for almost forever. And mm. even when you buy it, it's like $60. So it's, uh, it's a great host. Like, I always recommend a plugin developer to go for that one instead of the more expensive you know, mm. DAWs. Yeah. Just because it's, it's got all the features and, and you can get going on it. So, uh, first of all, let's explain uh, how uh, MIDI routing works in a host, just because uh, MIDI routing isn't something uh, as obvious as uh, you know, audio routing. So, if I'm going to add some uh, instrument, like I'm just going to pick the Rhea synth, which is the synth that comes built in with Reaper. You can pick any sound source. Uh, so now that I they picked it, so I could just uh, play some notes through it. Uh, by default, it's going to pick the MIDI uh, from the actual input, right? Yeah. Uh, so what I, I'm going to do is just going to give it input none so that it doesn't respond to my uh, keyboard playing anymore. Mm -hmm. And I can add another uh, track. In, in Reaper, it doesn't really matter if the track is uh, is audio or MIDI or something. It's almost the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you can but you can, I can use an instrument or something. It doesn't really matter. But uh, let's just pick a regular track. And then when you uh, click the the synth track, I can click uh, route here. And the in the routing window, I can pick it to receive a MIDI from another channel, like in this case, channel number two. So that's how you route MIDI, although nothing comes in through here for now, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be coming in pretty soon. It's called this MIDI effect, although there's really no MIDI effect just yet. Mm -hmm. The MIDI, and let's load the MIDI effect that we added. Uh, it should appear over here. Let's remove the search string. Mm -hmm. And this thing is called media effect, right? Yeah. Here you go. So media effect does nothing. Uh, I'm just going to save this project so I don't have to load it over and over again. And I'm going to exit Reaper. And now we'll take a couple of steps needed to actually pass MIDI into the into the plugin. Okay. So in the producer, uh, there are a couple of flags you have to raise to tell the host that you're uh, interested in the uh, in the MIDI. So because by, by default, the you know, the host is going to think that you're an effect, that you're just going to process audio. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, look for the Oh, sorry, click here, click the little How do you call that the thing? Uh, settings? Yeah. Yeah, but how do you call like the shape? Oh, English? it's like a sprocket, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so bad with Test, English testing my English as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So here under uh, plugin characteristics, uh, you're gonna pick plugin MIDI input and MIDI output because you want to process the MIDI. And I'm gonna resave. This will uh, generate the project, and I'm going to build this again. Uh, while this is building, I'm going to say that uh, if we had used something like Logic, Logic doesn't support uh, passing MIDI into an audio effect. So uh, the process would be a bit different. So if you, uh, if you wanted to build this plugin for Logic, you had to build it as an instrument, kind of like a synthesizer. Uh, and then... Uh, if you wanted to pass that MIDI forward, you could pass it to another instrument, but you couldn't pass it to an effect. Okay. Uh, with Ableton, Reaper, Cubase, and some of the other hosts, you can actually build an audio effect and just patch the MIDI straight through. So uh, this is my MIDI effect. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually going to remove it and edit again because I've changed 
properties of it. So it's possibly possible that um, Reaper didn't know what I was doing with it. Yep. And I'm going to give it some MIDI. Does it get MIDI? No. So let me let me remove this track and build it again, and uh, edit, edit just the MIDI track again, so that. Reaper will know what I'm talking about. Oh, here you go. I just have to add record. Okay, so if I'm going to edit, add the MIDI. Okay. Yeah. So now I added, added the MIDI, uh, the MIDI playing to the to my MIDI track, and if I'm going to go to my synth and click route, I can receive MIDI from it. Here we go. We got so now we basically patched the MIDI that was going into here. Let's call this channel MIDI effect. And I was patching it straight through into the synth track. Great. Everything works. We can go home. Nice. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to the code and actually uh, do something interesting with that uh, with that MIDI data. So first of all. Uh, let me go into the plugin processor file, and there's quite a lot that's going on here in the in the process block function. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove all that stuff because I'm not really going to process any audio. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to call two commands. One would be buffer dot clear so that it will silence any audio that might have come in by accident, and uh, uh, and I can I can do the same thing for the MIDI buffer, MIDI messages dot clear. All right. So basically, we have a processing function that does nothing, just clears any input. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm going to do, I I don't really like to uh, edit a lot uh, directly inside of the uh, inside of the uh, 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 plugin processor because the plugin processor does quite a lot like mm -hmm. it already handles you know saving loading uh reports the number of inputs and outputs so it's it's quite a you know quite a complicated file already mm -hmm. so what i like to do just to have a you know simple clean slate is to have uh another class uh in a new file that will do my own processing that's separate from all the definitions okay of, of what the plugin is so what i'm going to do I'm going to uh, go to the producer, and I'm going to just add a new header file, call it something like MIDI processor. So I created a MIDI processor, it's going to update my project, created an empty file. And let's, be, let, let, let's begin by uh, including the juice header. Include, might look better like this. Center at H. And let's have a class called MIDI processor. And for now, that class is just going to have one function. It's going to be called process. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take the MIDI buffer by reference. Mm -hmm. And why are we doing it by reference rather than by copy? So uh, the way the, the, the host works in both audio and MIDI is that the host gives you some chunk, like you know, uh, MIDI and uh, audio, and it basically asks you, the plugin, to do your own manipulations, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't do anything, it just goes straight through. Uh -huh. So, like, uh, for example, you just saw that when I just, when I didn't do anything with the MIDI, the MIDI still went through the plugin. So, mm -hmm. the, so the host is actually expecting uh, that if I'm modifying the MIDI, which I'm planning to do, uh, the host expects me to actually change the memory that it gave me. Okay. So I have to look. I have to basically take a reference so that I'm actually modifying the data that came from the from the from the host and not just some local data that I'm holding in the plugin. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, so I got the the process uh, thing and uh, for a start, let's see uh, uh, exactly wh what kind of information are we getting inside that MIDI, uh, MIDI buffer class. Uh, 
actually, before we do that, let's see how, how is this going to be patched. So the, the actual processor mm -hmm. uh, needs to include that file. So I'm going to include MIDI processor.h. I'm going to have an object here. Call it uh, MIDI processor or something. And the only thing I have to do to actually forward the call is during the process block, I'm going to call MIDI processor dot process and give it the MIDI messages uh, MIDI buffer, which I got from the host. Okay. So that's just a uh, simple forwarding so that we're here in this clean environment. Yep. Now, let's talk about for a second about how uh, the MIDI uh, data is structured. So, you know, when we're, uh, and you definitely talked about it in your tutorials, but, uh, but the, uh, the, the audio buffer is, uh, kind of simple to understand because it's just, you know, an array of information of numbers, mm -hmm. whatever you got some buffer of 64 or 128 numbers and you do something with them. Mm -hmm. uh, with the MIDI, it's a bit different because the amount of MIDI information that you can get uh, could uh, could be very, very different. So, for example, it's very possible you'll get no MIDI events because there's there's has been there's been no MIDI that, that was played. Mm -hmm. but it's also possible that the user, you know, basically, you know, shoved his hand on the keys and played, you know, played 50 notes, and while he was doing that, maybe he moved, you know, the pitch band and the modulation wheel and a bunch of MIDI CCs and pressed the sustain pedal and mm -hmm. all these other stuff. So, so with a with a MIDI buffer, we're basically getting all the MIDI events that could have happened uh, in this chunk of time. Yeah. So it's the same chunk of time as the as the audio buffer, and we're getting it in the same function even. So it's the same. It relates to the same. Uh, the same time uh, space, uh -huh. but uh, we we should we should know that that when we're we're gonna check this data, it's very possible that you know for for the timing of sample number two, uh -huh. we're gonna get fifty messages. Yeah. So we have to be ready for any amount of messages. Yeah. So that's why uh, Juice uh, used something called a linked list to store the MIDI message information. So getting that information is slightly different than what you used to with a, you know, with an array and a for loop. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is we have to use something called a MIDI buffer iterator. Mm -hmm. uh, and this iterator is, a, is an object that takes the buffer that it iterates on. After we've done that, uh, we need a cup two other things. One thing is a temporary uh, MIDI message object, which I will explain in a second. And the second thing is a sample position uh, variable. Okay. Why do we need those? Because when we're iterating over it, we have to do something like this. While, uh, sorry, iterator get next event. And we have to pass it that current message and sample position. Mm -hmm. So what is happening exactly here? Uh, so basically, the, the iterator is this object that we can use to uh, ask it, well, do you have another event here? And if they do, they give us back the next one with all the information. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they just say, just return false, basically, so we can... Uh, so we can keep going and not uh, not worry about the other events because we've reached the end. So the so these uh, temporary things right there are things that we have to declare so that the iterator can fill for us in case the an event has happened. So if an event has happened, this loop will be filled with uh, a current message. <clears throat> sorry, with a current MIDI message uh, for this event and the sample position for this event. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. So for a start, let's just start to see that we're getting the MIDI correctly by uh, planting some uh, debug statement. So uh, a MIDI message has a function, so we can 
I mean, Medium Basic has a bunch of functions basically that you can call. So one of them is called get description, which uh, if we look at the uh, the documentation, it returns a human readable description of the MIDI message as a string. So basically, it's just going to take the data in the MIDI message and present it in some, uh, you know, in a more in a nicer way for us to read. So if I go here and I'm using, I'll use the DBG macro. Mm -hmm. This will uh, just print it when I get a MIDI message. And for, so, and for people that may not know, DBG is essentially the same thing as uh, standard or STDC out. So it's just a logging function. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, so I've built my, uh, my plugin. And I'm here in Reaper. My effect is here. Uh, it's not loaded. Let's load it here. This is called MIDI effects. And let's play some notes and let's see what happens in my console. So when I'm playing notes, I'm actually seeing the log here on the screen. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that for each note, I'm literally just getting an event, like a note on or off, a velocity and a channel. And this is important to understand because uh, MIDI is a very, very simple format. Uh, mm -hmm. mi most MIDI messages are just three numbers of sorts. Mm -hmm. And within those three numbers, uh, uh, they're trying to encapsulate the which type of event it is. So is it a note on or off, or maybe it's a sustain pedal or something. Mm -hmm. uh, then, you have, and then, in, uh, then you have the channel information, mm -hmm. but also you have some special information that's related to this uh, this event. So in the case of a note event, you're getting the velocity. In the case of a CC message, you're going to get the value of that CC. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, if I'm just going to hold a long note now, see what just happened. Right, you see, I got a bunch of other messages called channel pressure. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's, it is important to, to, to know that a lot of messages can come in in here. So it's possible that the user recorded a bunch of things they don't even know, like channel pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen like uh, bugs in MIDI code where people just assume that the channel will only get notes and mm -hmm. things the user intended to send. But these stuff like this, that channel pressure, it sometimes just comes off your fingers if you didn't notice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so many MIDI devices will send stuff like, you know, uh, like, uh, like timing information or, or even a beat or all kinds of other non notes uh, messages. So it's important that when we're uh, iterating over them in the code to differentiate between note messages that we care about and other kind of messages that we might want to pass through because other devices might, might care about them. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, so for a start, let's uh, let's see if we, what we can do. Uh, what do, what do we need to do if we want to change that uh, that message and not just you know debug it? So I'm just gonna close my repro project here. And uh, ideally, we we could have just do something like this: current message dot. Let's say I want to change uh, all the MIDI notes to to be the same note. Mm -hmm. so ideally, I would have done something like this: set note number fifty. Or something mm -hmm. but this isn't going to work okay. because this this thing the current message we have uh, in this uh, scope in the in this function is just a local copy of the event it's not the actual event uh, if we wanted to uh, to change the events and actually you know send it to the back to the host in a modified way, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to uh, create another buffer and fill and fill it with our messages. So basically, create a modified version of the buffer and then give it back to the caller or mm -hmm. to the host in this case. Yeah. So uh, what we, what we can do is uh, right here uh, add a temporary buffer. So just like the buffer we got from the host. Mm -hmm. We can add a class member called MIDI buffer, and I'm going to call it processed buffer. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, 
what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm only changing notes. So I can do something like if current message is note on or off. So only note events are going to be handled. Mm -hmm. And if it's a note event, I'm going to take this message and set the note number to 50. So I'm just going to copy this line here, paste it here. <laughs> and after I've finished modifying the message, I can just go to my process buffer and send that message out. Current message and sample position. Oop. Sorry if you hear my dog, by the way. Uh, no She's begging for a treat. Go ahead. Con continue on, Al. I'm going to grab her a treat real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, after I've, uh, I've done this and Josh is uh, handling his dog, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm just going to swap the processed buffer that the host gave me, which is in MIDI messages, with the one that I've processed. So all I have to do is do MIDI messages, swap with processed buffer. The only thing I have to do after I've finished this, or before I've, I've done it actually, is before all of this is started, I have to clear my process buffer because otherwise, uh, I'll have stuff here from the from the last time this was called because this gets called uh, continuously. Okay. So this should work. Let's see what happens. Let's run this. Great. Loaded Reaper. So I'm I'm here. Let's. Uh, Bring up my thing. I'm just. I'm actually playing different notes here, mm -hmm. but I'm only getting note 50. So, uh, so this was a successful uh, transformation. Nice. We, we managed to eliminate any kind of or any sense of pitch that we usually <laughs> have. <laughs> Great. Great success. Yes. Uh, but we're not I, done yet, are we? Nah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, this isn't the end goal for yeah. people who want to do audio programming. Uh, all right, so uh, this is good. Let's uh, close Reaper. And let's start by doing something a bit more interesting. Let's uh, maybe add a, uh, a harmonizer of sort. Okay. Right, so uh, to add a harmonizer, that means we're not only going to be you know, manipulating existing events, we also are going to be adding events. So, for example, let's do something simple where for every note you're playing, uh, it's going to add one third up, which mm -hmm. is what a lot of harmonizers do. Okay. So how do I do that? Um, one way is to say, um, let's remove this, uh, this, the contents of this if statement. Switch back and, to your code again. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Wrong, wrong, wrong uh, key press. So, Sorry. so what I'm going to do is uh, 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 this was uh, this was the if statement that I've used before mm -hmm. for my amazing transposer, yep. and I'm going to switch it. And instead of doing that, I basically need to add a different kind of message, right? So what I what I want to do is I want to take a message. So for example, I can just copy the message that I have. So let's call it auto transposed message and now I can make any modifications that I want uh, so I can take this transposed message and and you know let, 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 let's grab the old node number so the old node number mm -hmm. was transposed sorry I'll do old node number So th this was the note number that happened there before. Mm -hmm. And now I can just uh, go to the transpose message and set the note number for an old note number plus four, for example, which is mm -hmm. a major third. I, I, I'm not a fan of, you know, just having numbers in the code. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to go up here and going to do const int interval or const expression int interval equals four. So now, 
this is a bit more expressive and less uh, hard coded. Yeah. Now, after I've done that, I can actually add this note into the buffer. So processed buffer, add event, transpose message and sample position. Right. Let's see what happens. Right, so check this out. Nice. So, whoop, where am I? <laughs> Got my amazing transposer. Nice. Or harmonizer. Nice. Sorry. Right? It's not the most musical harmonizer <laughs> uh, because it doesn't know how to stick to a key or something. Yeah. Uh, but it, nonetheless, it is a harmonizer. So uh, let's iterate of about what, what, what we just did. Why is this working? And while I'm going to iterate over it, I'm going to do something important, which is uh, giving uh, or extracting this to functions that have names, because this is becoming like a big chunk of code. Mm -hmm. And when I'm going to go back to it, you know, tomorrow or something, uh, it might not be as obvious what I wanted to do here. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's because I'm doing a lot of MIDI message stuff and stuff like that. So maybe I want to give names to this uh, to to processes that I've used. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is maybe I would take this entire chunk and extract it into something called uh, process MIDI input. And this is a nice feature of C line, which is that yeah. you can actually highlight a a bunch of code and actually create a function from it. Exactly. And, and, and it's just, it's just nice because, uh, I didn't have to think about, uh, the dependencies of that code, but it figured out automatically that to make this code work, I'm going to need to pass a MIDI buffer by reference mm -hmm. or by const reference in this case. Uh, so, so, we, uh, what we did was we got the iterator and we had all this, uh, code to, uh, grab the MIDI events as individual events. Mm -hmm. So we had to get the iterator, a temporary MIDI message and the sample position. And while, uh, you know, while the, I was getting a next event. So while there were still events mm -hmm. in the queue, I was running this whole chunk. So let's, uh. Uh, let's give a na names to some of it. So if this was a note on or off, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to call this add transposed note. So, so this is, this is a bit simpler, right? Now, now the code uh, can be looked at a bit from more from a high level. So mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's go back and look at uh, what's happening. So. Uh, in the beginning, we just call the process function from the plugin process function. Mm -hmm. We cleared the buffer that we uh, prepared before, just in case uh, that buffer had things in it. Mm -hmm. Now we called process MIDI inputs, and then we swapped it back uh, with the buffer from the host. So mm -hmm. we got our, our uh, buffer and gave it back to the host. Mm -hmm. In process MIDI inputs, we grabbed all the messages using the iterator, and only if uh, a note on or off event happened, mm -hmm. we added a transpose note. Uh, otherwise, including the cases where we added a transpose note, we just added the original note uh, into the process buffer. Nice. And add transpose note, uh, just copied the message, in fact, we can even simplify this. So now I don't even need to pass it by reference or something. I can just pass a copy because I don't really care about the original message in this case. So mm -hmm. I can just remove this entire temporary thing and just use my current message. Let's give it a better name. Let's call this something like, uh, let's call this message to transpose. That's a bit a bit of a better name. Nice. We got we, we got we got the old note number from it. Mm -hmm. We added our interval, which we declared up here is four four semitones, and we added added it back to the to the process buffer. So nice. really, that's it. Like this, really, the entire uh, the entire process of you know of doing some kind of MIDI manipulation, adding 
et cetera. Yeah, really nice. Learned a lot from that. Uh, and and there's so many different ways that you can extend off of this, isn't there? I mean, what are what are some of the ways that that you can actually extend off of uh, off of what you've just done there? Yeah, you know, it's 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 quite it, it goes quite deep because once you uh, understand you know the structure of how media events come in, you can uh, manipulate them in many different ways. You know, mm. a classic case is an arpeggiator. Yeah, uh, a MIDI sequencer. By the way, which you can uh, kind of uh, hold, you know, hold uh, a list of events and then play them back if you uh, if you do something like that. Uh, there's all kinds of things that fit your MIDI to a scale. There's mm -hmm. things that affect the timing. There's things that uh, kind of uh, maybe uh, learn what you're playing and kind of you know uh, adjust a velocity curve. Mm -hmm. So so once you once you you uh, you're working with the raw MIDI data. And you've stored it in some way, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, we didn't just we didn't do anything interesting with it. We just took some uh, notes and uh, changed the numbers. Mm -hmm. But if, for example, we uh, held on to an array of what the user played before, we could, I don't know, delay their notes or you know add our or add all kinds of patterns or use it for all kinds of purposes. So mm -hmm. this is this gives us uh, a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah, this is great, especially once you, as you said before, once you add the element of timing uh, yes. to this to this mix, then there are so many different things that you can do, um, creating different patterns, uh, and uh, and that's what that's one thing that we're going to do in future tutorials uh, is we're going to discuss a little bit about timing and how to get it. So we've done a tutorial in the past that was about a metronome uh, and in this case we're going to uh, go through a similar sort of concept with the gal about how to get a sense of timing from uh, from audio and how to calculate timing and how to use this uh, in a MIDI uh, in a MIDI plugin so I'm excited and I I'm hope you are too. as well <laughs> great so uh so this is a great place for us to wrap up this tutorial and uh and thanks for watching and if you found it useful be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you have questions or you want have things to add and even if you have uh suggestions on how to make this tutorial better we'd love to hear your comments below uh also join us on the audio programmer discord uh we have over 2000 people across the world now uh developers of all different uh skill levels all the way from professionals to teenagers typing their first lines of code and uh, come join us and hang out with us ask questions uh share your projects with us and uh yeah so cool uh so that's yal and i signing off and we will see you next time bye